Okay, so ju just recall you the definition of the general Lebesgue integral. Okay. So you have a function measurable okay is said okay okay is said to be integrable <coughs> if uh, the positive part both the positive part and the negative part are both integrable and moreover we defined also that in this case we as the integral of f we mean the positive part the integral of the positive part minus the integral of the negative part okay okay we saw last time all the properties the linearity then the monotonicity and so on Um, okay, so just let me uh, remark this fact that uh, uh, somehow when you have, uh, um, if you have to compute f plus g, so this operation is not defined, for instance, where f is equal to minus infinity or g and g is equal to minus infinity and also for the reverse case. Okay, but somehow this is not, not that important because we saw last time that if f and g are integrable, then what can we say about this set? Of uh, measure zero, okay? So actually we can neglect, okay? So we have that the measure where f is zero. So somehow it is, uh, if, we are, if we stay within the framework of integrable function, we can neglect to, to define f plus g, okay? Okay, then uh, an easy remark. Okay, we have that f is integrable if and only if the absolute values of f is integrable. Okay, this is uh, somehow, this is, comes from the fact that if f is integrable, we know that, so f is integrable, we know that both the positive part and the negative part are integrable. And so, of course, you have that f plus you can express like this and so you have that this is finite okay the reverse okay if you have that f is integrable then you have that f plus is less than this and the same holds for f minus And so, of course, you have that f being the difference between the two. You have that is this still integrable. Okay. Okay, now we, we see another important theorem of convergence under the sign of integral, which for sure you already know is the 
dominated convergence theorem, or it is also known under the name of Lebesgue theorem. So here you have, for this theorem, you have no requirement on the sign of f, okay? So you consider a sequence, fn, of measurable function. Okay. And you have g is a function which is measurable and and integrable okay over here okay what we require here and uh, is that we assume that that the absolute values of fn is bounded by g. Okay, g is clearly non-negative. Is bounded by g for any n, okay? The e, and this is also for any n. Okay. And moreover, we also assume that we have the pointwise convergence of this Fn to <laughs> pointwise convergence almost everywhere to some function f in E. Okay, then what we can say is that indeed under this hypothesis, the limit of a fan of x, the integral of the limit is equal to the limit. Okay, this is f of x is equal to the limit of fan of x in gx. Okay. Okay, let me, maybe I should write it more. No. Just write it f of x. Okay, for the proof, uh, may I erase this with the blackboard in the middle? Okay, the proof, uh, so we, we want to prove two sides of this equality. Okay, we, we, have, we have, of course, that minus gn is less or equal than fn minus g. And so, first we observe that g plus fn is larger or equal than zero. So, and of course we have that, and so fn plus g converts to f plus g almost everywhere in E. Okay? Okay, so what can we use here to deduce at least one first convergence result? 
here we use the Fatou lemma no? because we, these are positive and so we are under the hypothesis of Fatou lemma. So. We have that the integral over E of f plus g is less or equal than the lim limit of fn plus g. OK, and this is what? This is, uh, this is the limit of the integral of fn over e plus here doesn't depend on on n so plus g e and okay here we have this is of course by linearity is this moreover here we use the fact that g is uh, is integrable okay so the integral is is bounded so we can cancel out and we can first say that we have this side OK, and then we consider the other, the other inequality. So g minus fn is larger or equal than 0. OK, again, we use, so we have that the limit of g minus fn uh, is g minus f. And again, we use the Fatou lemma. For two lemmas, we have that g minus f is less or equal than the limit of, um, of g minus fn. OK, and here you have, OK, the integral of g, of course, does not depend on n, so you can, and here you put minus the limb soup of of a fan okay for the same argument that I told before you have this is g minus the integral of f over e so these terms can cancel out And so what we get, we get that limb soup of a fan is smaller or equal, yes, thank you, than EF. So we combine these two, okay. So, and we use the fact that, of course, the limit is always less or equal than, than limb soup. And so, if you have we get that, indeed, the integral of f coincides with the limit of, uh, uh, of fn. OK? And so we are done. OK, and now can I, OK. Yeah. 
Because you have that the, the, the Fn is because of this. So you have that Fn is less than G and minus Fn. Yes, I mean you, you have these two inequality, you know. This come from, from, from this fact. I didn't get your questions. Ah, you mean to, to rephrase uh, this, uh, this hypothesis in the case of, uh, I, mean, I mean, here the thing is that you have that Fn must, must be bounded for, of some, with, with, a, with, a, with an integrable function and also the negative from above and from below somehow. And so um, this, is, this is a way to express this. I mean, I didn't get, if you want to, I didn't get your questions. But I mean, they are, they are equivalent, I mean, what you, I mean, the fact that you write this on the, or you, you consider the two inequalities, these are equivalent. No? Okay, maybe we can, yes. Here, here. Ah, okay. This is uh, this is due to the to the definition of uh, of limf. If you, <laughs> yeah, lim soup. Okay, you can you can exchange. Uh, okay. Probably we use this, uh, I mean, this trick also when we prove that uh, um, the, uh, the limit the lim soup of, of measurable function is uh, still a measurable function. Okay. Okay, now we see some another version of uh, the dominated convergence theorem which is somehow the hypothesis are a bit relaxed and this goes under the name of generalized um, dominated con Lebesgue convergence theorem okay Okay, so we have uh, Gn. So we start by somehow, uh, here we consider, uh, we replace G by a sequence of function, okay? So Gn is a sequence of measurable and integrable function. such that we have that gn converts to a function g almost everywhere in e and we require that g itself is uh, the limit is uh, an integrable function okay 
then we consider let fn a sequence of functions which are measurable and such that fn converts to a function f almost everywhere in e And we have that fn is bounded by this function gn. So we don't need to have the same function here for any in e for any n. And we have that if we know that um, the integral over e of gn Okay, um, is equal to um, g. Okay, here we can, we can assume that they are positive. Okay, then. Hmm? Yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> Okay, then we can say that also the limit has then goes to plus infinity of a fan covers to the to the integral of f over e. Okay. Okay, so somehow the proof is a bit uh, analogous of the previous. So we divide it in, so you have that gn plus fn is larger or equal than zero. Okay, is, is, it, is it clear this, no? <laughs> okay, <laughs> maybe, maybe later we can, okay. Okay, and, and gn plus fn, we have that it converges, of course, to g plus f almost everywhere in E. Okay, <laughs> so we have, again, by the, by the Fatou lemma, you have that, um, okay, G plus F, the integral of G plus F is less or equal than the Liminf of Okay, so in this case for G, we know that the limit exists, so this is, can be written as, oh, as the limit plus, here we have to, to maintain the limit of E fn, and then here we use our hypothesis, and here you keep the nymph. Okay, again, since we know that G is, um, okay, G is finite, so we can cancel out the G, the, the integral of G, and so we get one side. Okay. Okay, the other side it's analogous to Less or ah. No, less uh, no this is a uh, uh, this step is equal because you know that the limit of gn is equal to, to g, no? To the, and here, ah, uh, before this, um, yes, this is, a, this is a equal, no? Because in principle you can split limit of gn plus
I mean, I think, uh, I mean, this is, you can split between the sum of, uh, of the, the two the limits, okay? And then this is equal to the limit. You know that the limit exists, and here you just have to get, to get the limits. Okay, so the other one. Okay, so you have that Gn minus Fn converge to G minus F almost everywhere in E. And again, by the Fatou lemma, you have that, okay, G E minus F is less or equal than the mean of E of Gn minus Fn. And again, for this, okay, for me it's equal, but uh, this is equal to the, okay, the integral of G minus. Okay, here you can use the trick that we used before. Okay. And so finally, what you get is that f is, the integral of f is larger or equal than the lim sup. And so again, if you combine the two, you get, you get, uh, you get the thesis. May I raise here this part? Okay, now we will see an exercise. So we have Fn, a sequence of, uh, um, of integrable function, some sequence. Okay, and we assume such that Fn converts to F almost everywhere in E. And what we want to prove is that with, okay, with F measurable, okay, then we want to prove the following equivalence. So this goes to zero if and only if we have that uh, this goes to zero, okay? So one side, so the one, this implication, the fact that um, the modulus of this difference goes to zero implies this fact 
is the easy part. So the other part is the somehow the difficult one, and we have to use also this this hypothesis. Okay. So proof. Okay. So. So this part. So this side comes from the fact that in general you have that this is less or equal than fn minus f and so when you get uh, so in general so you when you pass to the integral pass to the integral we obtain uh, the convergence of of the integral, okay? And then for the other <coughs> for the other implication, so if you start by knowing that this convergence holds and we want to, to achieve this one, uh, we have to use some theorem of convergence under the sign of integral, okay? Okay, so Hmm? Eh? Uh, the, the, the. Ah, we pass to the to the integral, okay, okay. So you, if you take the integral, okay. Okay, so um so what would you use in, in this uh, to prove the, the other the other way around? Maybe we can use the generalized Lebesgue theorem, no? That we that we just proved. Okay. And so we we have to to find, for instance, uh, the, so somehow this difference, the modulus of this difference plays the role of the Fn. Okay. And so we have to find a sequence that bound this uh, this modulus here. Okay. How would you? So okay, one way is that. Okay, so we want to apply. The generalized uh, Lebesgue convergence theorem. Okay. Okay, so first of all, we notice that so we, we, we have to infer something about the pointwise convergence of this, first of all. Okay, but this, this is easy, so we have that Fn minus F goes to zero almost everywhere in E, okay, by, by hypothesis, okay? And then how can we bound this in terms of a sequence that satisfies the hypothesis of the of the generalized uh, Lebesgue convergence theorem. So one way is, for instance, if you observe that this is less or equal than, than this, okay. So this is somehow plays the role of the GN, okay. Of the GN, they are integrable, and. Uh, we have that uh, Gn converges pointwise almost everywhere in E to some G, where this G is, where G, okay, Gn are this, okay, and where G is two times the modulus of F. And What we have is that uh, what we need also to check is that the limit of Gn, so the limit of the Gn is the limit of 
of Fn plus S. But we know by hypothesis that th this first part of the limit converts to the integral of F, okay? So this is indeed 2 times F, okay? Okay, so we are done, no? Because now we are under the hypothesis of the of the generalized uh, Lebesgue convergence theorem, and so we are done. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Okay, now I want to show you another way to prove uh, um, this second implication, which is somehow the most interesting, without using uh, the generalized Lebesgue convergence theorem, but only uh, the, the, the Lebesgue convergence theorem, okay, the, the first one that we state. So it's a, it's, it's a, a bit more um, um, somehow there are, it's a bit more lengthy, but it's interesting to see. Okay, just to simplify the things, uh, we, okay, we, let me reformulate. So you have Fn and F, some function. So assume that they are non negative because otherwise we, we, we state uh, the result with the absolute value. So j just, just assume that uh, they are non negative, integrable. Okay, and we assume that Fn converts to F point twice, most everywhere in E, and assume that uh, that we have the convergence of the integral. Okay, so we want to prove that we have also the convergence of the integral, so the, the integral of the absolute values of this difference goes to zero. And we want to prove this without using the generalized convergence theorem, but just the, um, the classical uh, uh, Lebesgue uh, uh, convergence theorem. Okay, we uh, observe this fact that if you, if you consider this sum, you can express this sum as the maximum between Fn of F minus, no, plus, the minimum between the same two. Okay, so let me call this uh, uh, denote this with uh, with a dot. Okay. Okay. This is is so because this is if x is such that f of x larger or equal than f of x, then you have that the maximum between f of x and f of x is equal to f of x and the minimum 
is f of x. Okay, so if you sum up the things are consistent, if otherwise x is such that you have that fn of x is less or equal than f of x, so you have the reverse, of course, fn of f is f and the minimum. is uh, um, fn. Okay, so is it true? And moreover, we use another inequality, in another uh, representation of this form. Uh, okay, moreover, we have that fn minus f, this time I take the absolute values of the difference is equal to the maximum of fn of f minus f plus, okay, plus f minus the minimum of fn of f. Okay, just so because you, if you have, in this case, if uh, you have two cases, if x is such that uh, fn of x is larger or equal than f of x, okay, then. <laughs> this is equal to this. And you have that the maximum between f of n and f is equal to f of n, and the minimum of f of n and f is equal to f. Okay, so, uh, so if you replace here the maximum is, is, f on, is f of fn, so you cancel these two f and the minimum is f. So. So, and the other, I mean, the other case is completely analogous, okay? Okay, so. Okay, just to, to wrote it in a more simple way, so you have that this is equal indeed to the maximum of fn f minus the minimum of this. Okay, so we want to study the convergence of the modulus of this difference. And we want to, um, uh, to use this representation, of course, okay? So we have that this is the integral of the maximum of fn minus the integral of the minimum of fn of f. So this is a, the term a, and this is the term b. So we start by this one, which is the, the easier somehow. <coughs> um, okay. <coughs> okay, so we have by hypothesis B Okay, we have that fn converts to uh, f almost everywhere in E. And so <coughs> we have that by this, you can also prove that the minimum between the two, fn and f, converts to f almost everywhere in E. I think we already proved something of this type, okay? Okay, so we can apply 
the Lebesgue the convergence theorem, so uh, by the Lebesgue convergence theorem. So why we can apply the Lebesgue convergence theorem? Because, so, um, okay, let me also Mm, sorry, let, let, let's state like, like, like this, so because this is less we are interested in saying that this minimum can be bound by, by f for any n, and this is integral. Okay, so now we can apply the Lebesgue convergence theorem. And we have that the integral of this minimum converts to the integral of f. Okay. Okay, now we have to treat the other part, the part A. Okay, so here we still have the pointwise convergence of this. So we have still that the maximum of fan, the maximum between these two converts to F almost everywhere in E. But what we don't have in general, it's hard to find um, a function that bounds this, this sequence, okay? So we have to argue in another way. So we recall that oh, by this, uh, this formula that I denoted with this dot, we have that the maximum of fn f can be uh, represented as fn plus f minus the minimum between the two, okay? So if we pass to the integral, what we have? We have that maximum minus the minimum, okay? Okay, so what can we say about the convergence of this part? By hypothesis, we, by hypothesis, we know that this converts that converts to two times f. So here we just prove by part uh, b that this converts to the integral over E of f. So at the end, what you obtain is that this converts to the integral over E of f, okay? So at the end, what we get here is that this converts to, to zero, yes, because you have f no, minus f. Okay, so this is, okay, this is zero, okay? So this is somehow another way to prove the same result, but by using, um, by using the theorem of uh, the, the, classical, the classical Lebesgue convergence theorem. Okay, and now, we see some, somehow some consequence of um, uh, the Lebesgue convergence theorem. So a classical consequence is that 
uh, you can differentiate under the sign of integral, but okay, we will proceed by step. And uh, I can have mm? it. Mm. Okay. So we prove this theorem. We consider f a function defined in this product space. So E is a measurable set and Y is a metric space. Okay, we assume the following. We have three, uh, three hypotheses, basically, that for any y in this big y, the metric space, the function which with y fix associate x to uh, f x y is integrable over e, Then the second hypothesis is this time we fix x and we consider f as a function of y. These times we require that it is continuous in y. Okay. And finally, we require somehow the existence of a uh, dominating function. So there is some g defined from e to so non-negative function integrable such that This is less or equal than gx. This is for any x in E and for any y in y. OK, then. A where? In. Uh, I, d I don't. Know. But I'm sorry, y associate f x y is continuous in big y. Yeah, I mean in y, I mean in the variable y. Yes, of course, in y belong. With respect, I mean, has a function. OK, it's, it's clear because I. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, I know that is uh, OK in y. This is, was just to stress the fact that uh, we, we are um, thinking at it, at it as a function of y. OK, y in y, yes. OK, then so what we want to prove is the following. F, big F, defined from this big Y to R is continuous. And now I tell you also how it is defined. Well, f y is defined as the integral over e of this function f x y in d x. Okay. So here you think at y as a parameter somehow. You think it is. Okay. So we have that uh, this is, uh, for any fixed y, this is integrable. So somehow this is a good definition. It makes sense to consider the integral, OK, just to. And then we observe, so we, we want to, 
to prove that this F is, is continuous, uh, this big F is defined on a metric space, okay? And on a metric space, the continuity uh, is equivalent to the sequentially continuity. So it's enough to select a sequence which converts to some sequence yk, which converts to some y, and to prove that f y k converts to f of y, of y okay? So, um, so f, so since y is a metric space, uh, continuity, if you want, uh, f is continuous. if and only if f is sequentially continuous. Okay, so we take point y, small y, in this big y. So take Take y in this big y and in the sequence yk, which converts to y. Okay, what we want to prove, of course, is that if fyk converts to fy. Okay, so we, we use the definition of f. Uh, so we def maybe it, it's, it's convenient to define this uh, uh, auxiliary function hkx uh, defined as f uh, x y k and in analogy hx defined as fx in y. Okay, these are measurable function and so on. Uh, so we have, since f is continuous in y, hk x converts to hk, um, okay, hk goes to infinity. And then we can bound this hkx by this function g. Okay, so we ap can apply the dominated convergence theorem. <coughs> we have that this is okay by definition. So then we use our notation. Oh, and this converts by the dominated convergence theorem to Okay, so we are done.
also my hair guys this part Okay, now we see another um, another application of the um, of the Lebesgue convergence theorem. Okay, so again we have that uh, f e times i r. E is a measurable uh, set and I is an interval. Okay. Uh, and there we assume <coughs> the following. Okay, this time that for any Y in the interval I, uh, the function which to x associate f x y is integrable in E and so that for any x in E this time we require more than the than the continuity is we want that this function is differentiable in so in y belonging to y, okay? Yes, it's clear. And three, as usual, we want that there exists an integrable function that control from above. Uh, this times the partial derivative of f with respect to y. So, okay, such that <coughs> this is less or equal than this g and this must hold for any x in the measurable set and for any y in the interval okay now we can you can imagine how what is the proof the the, the, the thesis then we have that f is differentiable Uh, okay, of course, in in, uh, in, uh, in I, and okay, F. Oh, F is defined as before, okay, and we have that. So F is uh, F of Y is uh, is defined as exactly as before. In the X, uh, no. And uh, what about the derivative? we can somehow bring the derivative inside the integral, okay? This is uh, the, the interesting part of the, of the um, theorem. Okay. So we can exchange somehow the integral and the derivative. Okay, so one first question that one may ask is that 
it, so it makes sense to consider this, uh, this integral. So is this function measurable? Okay, so the answer is yes, because you can, uh, you can think just at the definition of, of derivative has uh, uh, incremental quotient. So you have that the f and the y, x, y, take a longer a sequence. So this is the limit as k goes to plus infinity of x, uh, y, k, over y, k minus f of x divided by y, k. So somehow this is still a measurable function this quotient, this, the difference and the quotient, uh, if, we, if we take the difference and then the quotient, we still remain within the framework of measurable function. And, uh, and the limit is still a measurable function. This is, we already proved. So somehow this, uh, this integral is, uh, makes sense, okay? This is a first, uh, a first remark. Uh, okay. We have that uh, say what else I want to say that uh, and uh, okay, it is measurable and and it is of course it is uh, it is integrable because of this so okay, okay we want to uh, now to uh, to investigate uh, the, the differentiability property of this big F. So we just, as, as before, take a sequence yk that mm, converts to y, and you have f yk minus f y divided by one of yk minus y. Okay, and now we use uh, uh, the definition. So this is the limit as yk tends to y of, of okay of this so we have this is e f x y k minus e f x y divided y k minus y. Okay, then just use the linearity of the integral. <coughs> you can you can exchange you yeah. Okay, so we, now we are interested in study, in study this, this quotient. Okay, so we want to apply the dominated convergence theorem. <coughs> so we, we have basically to check two things, the pointwise convergence and if it exists a bounding uh, um, a function, integ an integral function that can, bow can bound this quotient. Okay, the, the first thing is that the limit, so the pointwise limit, x, y, k minus f, x, y, so y, k minus y, converts pointwise as k tends to infinity to the dy of f, x, y. So we have pointwise convergence and b. Okay, you can, okay, let me define this as, as before. You use, introduce this auxiliary function h, k, x, y, where this time is all the, the, the quotient, and this, let me call this h, x, y, okay.
Okay, so B, we want to This is a function, of course, of x. Okay. I treat yk as a parameter here. Okay. So here you have that at any fixed x, you can apply um, the mean value theorem. Uh, OK, so this is OK by uh, at any fixed x, we can apply value theorem. And so we can we can continue this inequality by saying that this is the F dy in X C uh, this is less or equal than G of X okay we can get rid of the, this G of X. This is by hypothesis okay This is true for any x and for any y. OK, now we really can apply the Lebesgue convergence theorem. continue here, okay. We can exchange, we can bring the limit inside the integral. This is k plus infinity fx y k minus fx y divided y k minus y. And uh, that's it now, and then we are finished. This is indeed so we have that F is differentiable, and uh, the quality that we state and we can represent its derivative in this way. Okay. Okay. Okay, maybe as, uh, as an exercise, you can prove the following. This is um, somehow a slight variation of what we what, what we saw. So you have that G uh, 
um, is an integrable function and okay e is measurable and uh, and bounded and let f y be defined in an analogous way as for instance g of x times the sinus of x times y in dx si yes sign sign yeah in uh, dx of course um, okay and y okay y this time y i took as matrix space r the full r and then you can prove that f is is infinity in r okay so the proof somehow you have to combine uh, the previous theorem so to combine um, so the previous theorem and uh, the um, and then you have uh, to prove by induction okay and uh, so and to, and uh, induction induction proof okay the induction on on the degree of the of the derivative of course Okay, in the last 10 minutes, let me uh, show you this lemma. So we have, we start by E, by a function F, which is integrable and okay e of course is measurable and we suppose that this integral is non negative for any for any a measurable contained in E. Okay. Okay, then as uh, we already did, we want to extract some pointwise information, this time on the sine of F, from the information on the sine of the integral. So what can we prove is that F is um, non-negative almost everywhere in E. Okay. Okay, so somehow the proof is basically always the same. So a way to rephrase this is to prove so the, th the thesis can be, can be viewed as saying that f, this set where f is negative, has measure zero. Huh? Eh? Huh? Eh? Sorry, excuse f, uh, me. F, thesis. Okay, uh, so it is okay. We want to prove this is to say that this is that f is non negative almost everywhere. Is so we want to prove that um, f this set as measure zero. Okay. Okay, so as usual, how can you can we express this set here as the union? Okay, the countable union of f is less than minus one over n, and then okay, by assumption we know that 
the integral of f of x over this set here is no negative. Uh, so this is less or equal by definition of the set uh, minus 1n times the measures of f minus 1 over n. Okay, so we have that. is equal to 0 because here I have a minus sign for any n. And then, uh, and then we are done, OK? Because you have that measure of this union. Uh, is uh, less or equal than the sum of the measure of uh, n and so this is zero and so we are done okay okay we can stop here I think today <laughs>